Well, hello everyone. Good evening, and I hope everybody's having a great day and is ready to go through some scripture and learn a little bit more about this about this Christian walk. So, um, for this video, what I want to discuss today is uh, suffering. Why we suffer as Christians, and it's something that happens to everybody in the world. And you know, Christians and you know, we're no different because we are still here in this world, and there's going to be suffering. There's going to be tough times, tribulations, whatever. And I want to give some background on why this happens and the purposes for, for for why it happens and the benefits to us and the glory of God for why we go through, for why we suffer. And, you know, a lot of people will say, man, if we're going to suffer, I don't even want to be a Christian, man. You know, but all the answer I always say is you're going to suffer regardless, whether you're a Christian or not. You're going to go through tough times and have a lot of, you know, a lot of tough things happen to you while you're in this world because of the sin and the fallen nature of this world. But in Christ. You know, it, you have you have a hope. You have, and I, I'm not talking about a you know a frou frou little type of. I'm talking about a hope that is rock solid, a hope that is exceeding expectation that you will be in glory with Him, and that while you're here, you have someone to lean on that's not gonna that'll never go anywhere, and who can sympathize with you in your sufferings, and who you who you know controls the entire universe and is able to do anything in any situation. So you can have peace and joy while you're going through these troubles and tough times. Not like the world, who when they go and you know who have no hope, basically when when you know when suffering and things are going on. So I want to take you to some scripture that will back this up a little bit, and uh, that's in First Peter chapter two verse twenty one. That reads, "For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving an example, so that you might follow in His steps." So, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. We suffer because Christ suffered. Because we have been baptized into his body, that means identified with him. Because he suffered, we are going to suffer too. And, you know, you can look at the lives of the apostles. You can look at the lives of people who've given their lives to Christ. You know, they, they suffer. They go through, you know, tough things in this world. But listen, that had that. The suffering, and Paul talks about it too, he says, the suffering that I go through down here is dung compared to what I'm going to receive in Christ when I go to glory. And he's he's so right, he's so true, in that you're only going to be here for, you know, a couple, if, if you're lucky, if you're lucky, a hundred years top, well, or, or more than that, but you're not going to live that long. But I can tell you, eternity is much longer than that. So, in suffering down here, it's all going to be temporary. It's all going to be, it's all going to pass away one day when Christ comes back. And that's what, and that's the hope. That's what we can look forward to as we go through suffering. And to give you a little bit more, so, and to go to some of the purposes for why we suffer, I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 7. Well, we can shorten that. We can go 3 through 5. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and God of all comfort, who comforts us all in our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction, with the comfort of with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. So what Paul is talking about here is that we we suffer and we, we go through afflictions and trials because we are able to comfort those who go through those same trials as well. And I always think about this, you know, if I'm, you know, having a tough time, you know, say I go through a breakup or, or you know, say, you know, I have a terrible car accident or something like that. And I get hurt or, you know, or perish and my family has to deal with, with that. You know, they're going to have more comfort in speaking and talking to somebody who's been through it and who's had to deal with things like that. But who has looked to Christ as well and who have, has received the strength from Christ to continue to keep going. They're going to receive, you know, they're going to be more comforted in that than just talking to somebody who hasn't been through something like that because it can't relate to them and it just makes it different. So that's one of the main reasons why one of the many reasons why we suffer is because we are able to help one another as we go through our trials and as we go through, you know, things that happen in this world. So next reason is because that we suffer is because it makes us realize we still have to be dependent on God and we always need to be dependent on God and it makes our bond stronger with him. So for that I want you to turn to Second Corinthians chapter twelve verses eight through ten. And 
that reads, this is Paul talking here about the uh, the thorn in the flesh, and that's, you know, that's well-known passage of scripture. It says, three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. He's talking about the thorn in the flesh. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with, with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So that thorn of the flesh, we don't, you can't dogmatically say what it was, what that thorn of the flesh was. Could have been a health problem, could have been a problem, you know, with, with um, I don't know, with people around him. It could have been anything. I don't, you know, you can't dogmatically say. But... And if you go back a little bit in scripture, he says, you know, even Satan gave that to him, that thorn of the flesh to hinder him. But Paul says he gives us some powerful scripture right here. And, and this is God speaking to him. He says, but my grace, because Paul asked three times, God, can you take this out? Of me? Can you take this away from me? And that's something that we do all the time. You know, we always want to be taken out of a situation. We always want to say, God, can you please rescue me? Can you please get me out? And if, we, and if he doesn't, on a, in a time period that is acceptable to us, we get upset. We get mad. Or if he never takes us out, we still we get upset, we get mad with him. But what we don't realize is there are so many lessons that he wants to teach us in our trials and in our hardships. And in, you know, like he says, calamities, persecution, weakness, insults. When he's going through all that, when he focuses on Christ and God, you know, it, it, I can't, it, it's, it's just amazing to think that when we do that, it builds us up in a way and it makes us more dependent on God and it gets us to have a better relationship with him because that's, you know, that's the times when we lean on him the most is when, you know, and we shouldn't do that, but we do is only as we lean on him more and more and more when we're at our weakest. And then when we do that, it shows how powerful God is and that we should like, he, and like even Paul says in my weakness, that's when I'm strong because I'm leaning and dependent on God. And that's one of the things that happens to us is, is one of the reasons, and I, I didn't write this down, but that's one of the reasons why God lets us go through suffering is because if he doesn't, then we get up, if we're always on the mountaintop, when you're all the way up on the top of the mountain, all you can do is look down. You never look up. But when you go down to that valley, all you can do is look up. So when we get up on that mountaintop and we stay there all the time, constantly, nothing, if nothing bad was to ever happen, what happens? You forget about God. You forget about the reason why you're there. You forget about all the things He's ever done for you. But when you know He, but when that when He allows the rug to be pulled out from underneath of you, and you hit that ground, then you look up and you remember who God is and what He can do for you, even in your sufferings and even in your hard times. So, and that's what He does for Paul right here. He says, "My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness." God didn't take that thrown in the flesh away, but He said, "Paul." My grace is sufficient for you, and my power is made perfect in weakness. He said, I am not going to take you out, but I will get you through. And that's what God does for us a lot of the times. He doesn't always take us out, but he will always help us to get through these things if we learn to lean and depend on him. So, something else I want to show you is that in Christ, we have someone who we can go to all the time, anytime about anything because he can relate to us because he was here he went through what we go through he was here on this earth and he suffered and had hard times and troubles in the same way that we do and i want you to go to uh hebrews chapter 4 verses 15 and 16 and the scripture reads for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So, what is that telling us right here? And to give you a little background, you know, Christ, he suffered in ways that we can definitely relate to. Christ came to a poor family, didn't have any type of money, never had a place to stay in his whole earthly ministry. He, you know, he experienced death in the family. You can think of Lazarus, even though Lazarus, you know, he was just a great, he was a great friend, but he still, he experienced death of someone who he loved. And he, you know, it's, it's powerful scripture. He said, Jesus wept. 
and that wasn't just a whip like you know like um i don't know what what you would think of but that i can't remember that greek word exactly but that means an agonizing type of cry that means i mean bawling crying you know the type that you cry so hard that you can't breathe that type of crying so you know he he knows what we're going through he knows what we've been through he's been here so he can identify and he can sympathize with our weaknesses and that's how we can draw near to the throne of grace and deter- and obtain mercy and grace and help in time of need because of that because of him that's one of the reasons many reasons why he came down here so he could identify with us because like you say like for example if you get a at, at some big company some manager comes in and he just takes over and he starts running this company with an iron fist and, and something like that. And you have and he's never had to have gone through, you know, being at the bottom of that company, being the uh, janitor, being and I, and I'm not trying to make fun of any type of job or anything like that. But I'm just using this as a point, you know, being a janitor, being the being the lackey, being the servant in that company. He can't relate to anybody. He can't he can't um, sympathize with the people who who've never had anything. He can't, you know, he can't be an advocate for those people because he's never had to experience what they go through. All he knows is about being on the top. And that's why Christ didn't come here as a king. He didn't come here with any dignity. He didn't come here with his angels. He didn't come here like that. He came here as a poor baby and born in a, in a, born in a barn just so he could identify with people who don't have money, with people who don't have things. He wanted to be able to identify with the lowest of the low. That's why he came in the way he did. And that's how we can go to him with our, you know, and, and just on our hands and knees because he can identify what we go through because he's been through it. And I love that about him. And moving on, suffering, it purifies us and it causes us to grow. And it produces all these types of fruit. In our lives, and some, and I want you to turn to uh, James chapter one, and verse two, and that reads, "Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing." So. He's he's straight up telling us right here, count it all joy when you meet various trials, trials of various kinds. When you go through hard times and hardships, count it all joy. How in the world do you do that? How in the world, when bad things happen, do you count it all joy? It takes the power of the Holy Spirit to do that. It takes Christ in your heart to be able to do that. That's the only way you can experience joy when you're going through hard times and things like that. Because you learn to lean and depend on God. And you know that no matter what, He has it all under control. And that's why you can have joy. That's why you can have peace in your sufferings and in your hardships and in things like that. So, and this is this is what I like to always call as witness material right here. So, in our sufferings, when the world sees us suffer, and they see us go through things, and they can see us, you know, somebody you have a death in the family. And I'm not saying that it's a you, there, there is no problem. There's the Bible says there's always there's a time for mourning. There's a time for you know despair. There's, there's a time for all that stuff. But even in that, you can have joy, even though you might not show it on your face. You or you know I, I'm going on. I'm gonna backtrack. You know, even though every day you might not always you know feel the best. Deep down in your heart and your soul, you can have an eternal joy that can never be taken away. And going on that, you know, a, a good friend of mine. Well, yeah, he he he's a twin, and his his twin brother passed away. But I didn't, I never I didn't get a chance to go to the funeral, but I heard so many good things about him in that funeral. You know, his twin, you know, the guys he was I think he was either eighteen or nineteen when his brother passed away, car accident. And to see him, I you know I'm, I'm just taking people's perspective for who, um, who was there. They said to see his strength, to see his his unwavering to see his his focus on God in that whole entire time that produced so much faith in all these people because he should have been people say he should have been breaking down crying he should have been so hurt so hurt so torn up but he wasn't because he had his eyes focused on God and he knew where his brother was because they had just gotten saved 
you know, a couple weeks before that happened. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know the timetable, but I know he got saved pretty short time before that car accident happened. So he knew where his brother was, and people looked at him and said, "Why isn't he suffering? Why isn't he crying? Why does he have this this joy about him?" And that's because he was focused on Christ. And you know, the world can see things like that, and they can say, and they can see that you know, why are you guys so dip? Why are you guys different? Why are you guys, you know, have joy even in trials and tribulations like this and that's a perfect opportunity to point somebody to Christ because that's the only way that we can have joy in times of suffering and I had another point I wanted to make but oh you know and but flip side of that when people see Christians stressed out stressed to the max biting fingernails even to the point where you're getting a little bit of that skin in there you know stressed out flipping out on people things like that then when they see us they can say well why is Jesus so good if, if you, when you're suffering and you're going through things, you take it just like I would. You stress out, you know, you financial problems, whatever. You sitting there stressing out all the time, going, you know, can't sleep at night, have no peace. You know, why would I want any, why would I want Christ if he can't, if he's not going to be able to help me? You know, why do I even want to bother? And that's something that we Christians have to work on. And, you know, and I say this all the time, you can only have that peace and joy if you have the Holy Spirit in your life to be able to give you the strength. Because in your natural body, in natural form, you cannot handle the things of the world. You can't handle what can happen to you in this world on your own. So that's why you need the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to get through these things and to have joy in them. And to give you some more scripture on on growing in these times is First uh, Peter chapter one six and seven. It's something that I would encourage everybody to memorize. And that reads, as soon as I turn there, And this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is how God purifies us. It is how he makes us more like Christ. So, you know, with gold and what he's referring to right here, when gold comes out of the ground, it has dirt on it. It's dirty, has muck and miry clay on it, and it has to be purified. Well, what do you do to purify gold? Put it in the fire. Fire burns off all those impurities, and that gold comes out pure. In that same respect, that can be related to us going through trials and tribulations. We go through the fire, and in the process, it burns off pride. It burns off hatred. It burns off, you know, all these things that that be, that um, that hinder us from being a better follower of Christ. It burns all those impurities off, and it helps us. And it, as we go through that fire, only God can help us get through that fire. So by leaning dependent on Him, it produces that fruit, and it produces a better relationship with God because you have to you are forced to lean and depend on him and it produces fruit in your life and in, in those fruits you can go back to James 1 and 1 and 2 or well, chapter 1 verses 2 and 3 to look at that you know it produces steadfast and it, it produces perseverance it produces all these you know all these qualities in you when you have to go through that fire because it makes you pure it purifies you so one last point is that while we suffer is that it, this suffering lets us know that this is not our home. And that's First Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. That reads, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. So, in a nutshell... I don't want to say this. We suffer and we go through tough times down here because God doesn't want us to get too comfortable. Because you can become so earthly minded that you can be no heavenly good. In that while you're here, if if Christ never, I mean, if, if, if you never were allowed to suffer and you never were made to depend on God, you would become comfortable down here. And then you would equate this with your home. You would be so comfortable down here that you wouldn't want to leave. But God allows suffering down here so that you remit you that so that you know and you realize you don't want to be down here. 
that you do not want to remain here for the, for eternity, that you want to be with him. And that helps us to realize that, that suffering down here, all the suffering, all the pain, trials, and whatever that goes on down here is not going to be going on in glory. So that's one of the main reasons why we suffer is God doesn't want us to get comfortable down here. And he wants us to remain dependent on him because in the end, that's we, we need to be. We need to be dependent on God because... In these mortal bodies, you know, we, we break down. We're not going to be healthy all the time. We're not going to be, we're not going to always have, have health. We're not, you know, people, people pass away. People get sick. People get cancer. All these things happen. And the only way that we can have a hope in a, in a rock solid hope and joy and be able to have that joy and peace in these situations is to have Christ. Now, this this is a stumbling block for a lot of people because it's when they become Christians, or this is a lot of why this is a lot of times why people, you know, want nothing to do with God because they they say, you know, I'm so he's if he's so good, why do these bad things happen? If he's so powerful, why does he allow these things happen? And that's a whole I can it's a whole another can of worms to go into all that, but this is just a couple of points on why we suffer as Christians, and. You know, when you look at it, and when you look at it in in this way, that we suffer because Christ suffered, and that He is our advocate, and He knows what we go through, and He's able. We that's why we can go to Him in our time of need. You know, it just it shows us how much He loves us, and how much He wants to have a relationship with us, and how much, and you know, and it gives us it gives us a reason why why we suffer. It's because God wants us to know that we still need Him, that we'll always need Him. And that we can't do this thing on our own. And, you know, I really hope that this helps somebody out. You know, if, if I know people go through terrible things. And I, I can't even imagine. I'm not even going to try to, you know, if somebody goes through something that I haven't gone through, I'm not going to sit here and say, man, hey, I understand what you're going through. Because I, cause I don't. But I can tell you that God can get you through anything. If you put your faith and your hope in Christ and you focus on him, he can get you to do anything. Because he lived down here, too. And he went through things that none of us will ever have to go through. So, and that's God in the flesh, man, coming down here just to save, just to save us, just to to show how much He loved us. And you know, with this video, I hope that it helps some. I hope that it helps somebody. And you know, if you have any other questions or comments, if you know, if if you like this video, you know, give a like, give a share, do do whatever, man. I, I really appreciate all the love and all the likes, all the shares that people do. You know, it really, it's really a blessing, man. I really appreciate all that everybody does, all the views, whatever, man. Just, I pray that you keep on asking questions, sending comments, whatever. I'm, I'm open. I'm, I'm, I'll talk about anything, man. And I, I just really appreciate y'all. And I hope y'all have a great day and just keep on focusing on Christ through whatever. And I hope, and like I just said, I hope y'all have a great day.